nuclear reactors dominate the skyline of Dunre, but they are not the only major hazards here that need to be made safe. There's another area of the site where decommissioning is every bit as important. This is the fuel cycle area, a complex series of chemical plants that make up a quarter of the site. Nuclear material was scarce in the early days of atomic research. These plants were built to recover highly enriched uranium and plutonium from fuel that had been used for research in the UK and abroad. The used fuel was recycled in these chemical plants to provide British scientists and their allies with fresh stocks of highly enriched uranium and plutonium. Many tons of fuel passed through these plants leaving a toxic legacy of chemical and radiological contamination. Dismantling these industrial plants safely is a major part of the overall site closure program. This part of the fuel cycle area recovered highly enriched uranium that arrived in nitrate solution. It passed through a number of chemical processes to convert the uranium into a metal billet. About one third of the uranium recovery plant has been cleaned out and dismantled so far. The chemical and radiological contamination inside these pipes, vessels, ovens and boxes is toxic. It's safely contained when the process line is intact, but breaking it up creates significant new risks. A worker who swallows or inhales even a small amount of contamination could suffer long-term health effects. So it's vital they wear the right equipment to protect them from harm at each stage of the job. This will include wearing a respirator or working in a sealed suit with its own air supply. This part of the uranium recovery plant processed the material in the form of ammonium diurinate. It was heated up to produce uranium trioxide, crushed, sieved, mixed with hydrogen and reheated to produce uranium dioxide. The whole area had to be shrouded inside a plastic container before work could begin. Ten people have taken two months to dismantle this part of the plant and the equipment that once sat here is now in pieces inside one of 75 drums and containers that will be managed as low-level radioactive waste. Gordon Tate is the senior project manager in charge of the work. What we're doing is systematically stripping out the building um, section by section basically and we've cleared, we've already cleared one area up at the west end of the building which was quite difficult to do a, legacy of years of contamination and that took quite a bit of cleaning up to be able to walk around without any protection whatsoever. We're now working through some of the um, various pipe work and tanks and so on and this, this particular containment here very close to being finished with two, with two identified packages within it. The main one is now gone. We have a small one still to do and then on completion of that we decontaminate and clean the panels of the containment to allow them to be reused and put up around the next section of the plant that we're going to strip out. And there are several sections in this area, as you can see, that we're going to be taking out in a systematic order. When you're doing radiological um, decontamination, dismantling work, decommissioning work, there are essentially two hazards caused by, the radi you know, by your radiological materials. You can get external radiation and your basic precautions there are shielding, distance and the other thing is where you, the danger is not so much from external radiation but from internal radiation i.e. where you can breathe in the product and it can get you from inside. Now the works on, that we're doing here are predominantly an internal hazard. There's a risk if people were to breathe in some of this material because it's relatively light, air, but can go airborne it doesn't give them much in the way of external dose, but if it got inside them, it could cause trouble. So what we do in those circumstances, we wear these things called airline suits, and they protect the man, provide in a heavy-duty 
uh, plastic suit supplied by uh, breathing, you know, compressed breathing air, and the, and the guys have uh, again several pairs of gloves, etc., to make sure they don't become, don't get you a risk of breathing in any of this contaminant. The team doing the work are a good example of how an operations team have made an excellent transition towards decommissioning. They've learned a number of skills and they're now becoming very slick at what they do because what we're doing here is reasonably complex, potentially hazardous work and requires a lot of skills, a lot of precautions and a good bit of technique as to how you get, to get your plant dismantled in a nice safe manner, packaged up as good waste ready for onward storage.